No, I just I don't tell my race because I want to be racist. I think mixed race uh, people are likely the m- most racist ones, and because people are gonna be like, "Oh, you're just projecting that into other people." So let me be clear. I'm racist. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the clip. Yeah, Thank that's you guys. The clip, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My guest today is Noel Miller. Uh, super fun conversation. Even though we had to, we had to rip this thing late night, uh, he made some time for us. Opened up his studio in LA after a long flight back from Toronto. Uh, really fun interview. Talked about a lot of. I mean, Noel has kind of done it all creatively, uh, especially when it comes to YouTube. He released a special called Stop Crying. He's part of the Tiny Meat Gang podcast. Created a show called Hot Laps, where he turned a desk into a sports car. And we actually talk about how horrifying his experience with Daniel Ricardo was, but super fun conversation. Um, and at the end of it, uh, monologue today, we're going to talk about stress. I feel like it's been, I've, I've been sensing it in the air. It could just be my life. Uh, maybe it's yours, but I, I get into that a little bit more at the end of the show. But without further ado, here's the interview with Noel Miller. All right. We're in. Hell yeah. Noel Miller. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Of course, man. Fresh off a flight from Toronto. What is that? Six hours? Five and change. Five and change. Something so you're like you're fresh. You're yeah, feeling good. Feeling great. It's 8 p.m. on yep. a Tuesday night after yep. a long weekend of shows. Love it, dude. So you were in Portland and then you flew to Toronto. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's good planning right there. Yeah, dude. It was, I mean, you know, uh, it was just like there was no other way to do it because um, my friends are filming a show. And uh, let me just pick up that name real quick. Yeah. It's What's like, up? It's like a subtle name drop to be like my friends are making a TV show. Is it a name drop if you don't drop the name? That's what I'm saying. It's subtle. What would you call that? That's very subtle. I was, you like didn't even drop the name. Yeah, yeah. Your friends are filming, but it's a Can- you did yeah. mention it was a Canadian TV show, so, so it means it's a mid flex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it means a lot. <laughs> no, that is to tied me and them. Yeah. So now they were filming this month, and the way the dates lined up, um, they wanted me to do a scene, and I really wanted to do it, but. It had to be after this. It weekend. had to be done. Yeah. Now is TV. Now you. You know. Obviously, people know who who you are more than, more than me. But I'll, I don't I'll, assume that, man. But I don't assume uh, that. but is TV something you'd want to do? You've obviously you've gone through a, tons of platforms. You were what on Vine initially. Yeah. And then the YouTube game, mm-hmm. and you've been kind of doing stand up the whole time. Is yeah. TV that always used to be the logical endpoint that everyone yeah. was trying to get to? Do you feel that at all, or are you just kind of like it's a thing and it's a cool thing and if you care about the project but it doesn't seem like as much of a destination anymore no i think it's well i guess to answer your question like i don't know if if it's like an end goal but it's definitely something i'd like to do Mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know i feel media is so weird right now like because you can be successful on the internet you can transition to traditional but i think everyone knows now the internet's going to pay you faster and Mm -hmm. you know in larger sums and I think the studios are in a weird place because they can't really match an internet rate unless you're, like you're a huge talent. So, yeah, I think like anyone else, obviously I'm open to it. But um, I'm basically saying they have to pay internet money to get my attention. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> well, there's a mix of like you're like your time is now. Na- now you can quantify what your time is worth. So yeah. you're not necessarily gonna you know take a massive unless it's yeah. something that you're particularly interested in. It doesn't come down like it doesn't come down to that for me. But I think I would love to go to TV because they definitely, if you come up with a dope concept, it seems like you can get a lot of money to make something really cool. Yeah. So in that respect, I think TV. That's where TV and the big studios, I feel, have everyone beat, is they have crazy financing ability. Yeah. And so if you have a really dope concept, you kind of have to go there. Right. Um, and I would imagine for you, the concept for TV would have to be insane, because the type of stuff that you're already throwing at <laughs> YouTube, I mean, is ridiculous. Like, you're instead of just starting a talk show, you're like, why don't we build a desk that drives... <laughs> insanely like that's an unnecessary maneuver i know but it is tight it's like the hardest concept to get uh going but i mean the desk gets going but, yeah uh yeah 
I know. I <laughs> do you think you overcomplicate things? Definitely, because I like I don't know. I want to try to do something weird, I guess. Right. But sometimes I back myself into corners where I'm like, oh, this is really hard to do. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Which I, is cool. I mean, I think that's awesome. I think thanks, people want to see someone who's taking risks and trying to do things differently. But is it frustrating when you put like time and resources and all this stuff into some really crazy concept and then like the reaction video or whatever the easiest thing to do is does 10 times better and you're just like god damn it yeah i mean it's just like everyone is stupid and doesn't get my art and uh, right. yeah no i it doesn't really bother me it's like i think it's it goes with anything if you make something that's that's like when you make a tiktok that you don't care about and it gets like 20 million views or something right everyone's told that story at some point i, I think it's the same thing when you make something that's more nuanced or weirder it's going to be harder to figure right. out right and so. the people who get it will probably like it but it's you know yeah well it's, it's like a it's it, i feel like this stuff is now getting more and more like music mm. where it's like you have your like pop single that's for everybody that yeah. does numbers that people know you for yeah. but you're like the real fans love the fucking b-sides yeah <laughs> and the b-sides are just like weird art garbage that's yeah debatably good yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does. It does feel that way. I think, and I think it's funny too, because no one wants to be what they are anymore. Like, what do you mean by that? Like people, when they blow up off of something, it's they so quickly want to be something else. Like YouTubers want to be music artists, and music artists want to be funny, and right, you know, uh, or artists want to be actors. And I think the cycle that, uh, like, if you have been at something for a minute, uh, people always want to pivot. But I feel like that cycle is getting faster. Maybe right. that's in my head. Well, it would it would make sense if you arrived at that conclusion, considering you've done everything that you've <laughs> <just mentioned. laughs> you've literally I know, done. I know, I know. Uh, acting, YouTube, <laughs> music video. I didn't even know the music arc until uh, I was man, looking it's, into it. You know, yeah, it it was a time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a time. No, I love. And but do you think you identify most with stand up? Yeah, because that's where I started. Right. Yeah, but you started there, and what? When was that? Twenty. This part is always like it's nebulous. No, no. It's it was twenty I think eleven. It's like eleven or twelve. Yeah. I was working as like uh I basically like taught myself how to write code and then I got my first uh job doing that full time for like an ad agency in Burbank and I just so happened to be working with a comedian, he's like an old uh older comic. <laughs> He's gonna hate me for saying that, but his name's, <laughs> his name's Andre Paradise, and uh -huh. um, we'd always like shoot the shit just, you know, at our desks or whatever. And he was the one that was like, "Yo, man, like you should try stand up." And so he broke me into it. Um, so I did that for like three years. Uh, I was just like grinding mics and stuff, and then, uh, and then the internet. Then I like kind of moved around jobs, and then the internet thing started really working. So because I had a day job, I kind of had to pick. Right, and like you know how it is in stand up. Like the shit goes late, especially in L. A. It's it's harder to get time. So yeah. I couldn't just like quit the job and go do whatever. And I was in a fortunate position where I had like a very like legitimate job. Yeah, <laughs> it was like helping me like get out of debt. And so it was it was important to my life. So I just had to pause stand up, like which really sucked. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was like a two year break, and then. So you were keep did you keep doing internet stuff? You're doing like internet, like making content, day job, but just couldn't do couldn't do all three. Oh well, I'll, I'll, oh so let me clarify. So I was doing stand up, and then that's when I was like grinding Vine, mm -hmm. um, and so I was working those two. And then um, after after like three or four years, that's when I met my podcast co host Cody, mm -hmm. and he was a, a engineer as well. Um, so we ended up working together, and. At that time, that's when I was like still doing stand up, pure, like as much as I could. But then he and I started working together, like on like random videos. Like he would be in a YouTube video for my channel, like we do a sketch, and, or I would help him like with a vlog or whatever. Um, and then we kind of just like we discovered the reaction format, and then he goes, "Oh, why don't we try reacting to something?" Um, and I had found like this video, of, like a a robot giving like. A, it's like a blowjob robot. I love that. Yeah, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. You should sell those. Yeah, they yeah. Could be merch. Oh, they do. They yeah, do. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. And uh, damn, uh, that's just. I was just thinking if they just sold that shit at Skankfest. 
They might as yeah, well. Yeah. Or like the, the way Skank Fest works, I could see them just having one rolling around that just you clean it off every <laughs> once in a while. And just I've never been, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak Skank out of Fest turn. Skank Fest is awesome. I yeah. love. I've had an incredible time there. No, I've heard it's great. You know, yeah. I could see them, you know, you know, paying for two or three and just yeah. cleaning them at intermission yeah. sort of vibes. <laughs> but yeah, so like we did that, and then, um, weirdly, like, not. I, mean, I say weirdly because it, it just felt like a right place, right time thing. Um, all the videos we made together like just blew up. So yeah. then that's what ended up motivating our podcast and like motivating into everything else. So it was like for those two or three years, I had to pause like just grinding clubs. But we ended up touring together. So I kind of got brought it back. Yeah, yeah. And like yeah. we did it like a show together and um, I would just do stand up essentially in the middle of the show. Yeah. Um, did you ever imagine when you were doing all this YouTube stuff and stand up was what you wanted to do? Did you ever see those worlds colliding again? Um, I feel like you're like uniquely like almost accidentally in the perfect spot. Yeah. For those I'll things. definitely say I was, in, I was like the timing was crazy lucky. I did start making internet content cause I kind of had this like naive thought. I didn't really understand comedy. Right. I was just kind of thinking in like a brute force way where I was thinking, oh, if I can justify maybe booking me because I can sell tickets, maybe that's how I could get more time. I don't think that's a naive perspective. No, no, no. I guess I guess I guess I say it's naive in the sense of like. I think stand up is a bit more than that, at least like at least getting to know who's doing it. Working the, on who you in are. In respect of, like, people in a certain, like, in L.A., like, you don't want to be booked just as the guy yeah. who come on the show just to sell tickets. Sure, yeah. Whereas, at a certain level, if you're headlining, yes. Yeah. But that's not necessarily how you want to get known. Exactly. But it does kind of help speed up the process <laughs> yeah, a little bit, because yeah. otherwise it's just 12 years. Yeah. Of <laughs> so I think, like, I kind of had, um, like, the eventual goal that, oh, okay, um, if I can... I don't know if I can prove that I'm capable of like making something funny. Yeah. Maybe then a select amount of those people will come see me and I could get back to stand up eventually. Yeah. So I think that was always in the back of my mind. And when you started seeing stand up like taking over YouTube, were you kind of like, <laughs> just like I planned? <laughs> no. Oh, no. I mean, no, no, honestly, because I. Were you I, stoked though? I was, but then I started having an. Sometimes it still hits me now. I have weird feelings about it. Damn, should I have tried to make time? It wasn't possible, uh -huh. but part of me feels, damn, should I have like stayed in the clubs, like mm -hmm. kind of like working on whatever. Right. Um. So if anything, when I saw clips and stuff blowing up, I was, I was actually just really jonesing to like get back to stand. Right. Up. You were kind of jealous because you were like, I'm doing numbers, but I wish it was for that. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I, I like I I don't hate what like the successes i had you know i don't want to shy away from that because no, that definitely should. that yeah. definitely like made me where i am now yeah but i think it's more of a i like mentally i want to be in like 15 places at once yeah i i'm not trying to be dismissive of no all no no, no. I, I don't think, think that at all i, don't I think just that at i think all. everyone is in their head about something and of course, it's either of like course. the people who are like been doing stand up and haven't like had the success that are like, why did I fuck this up? I yeah. should have done that. And then yeah. people who are in a position who have a fan base, but you're just like, oh, I don't know if I'm seen this way or yeah. it would have been cool to like come up at, in mm -hmm. the in a certain way. Yeah. And I, I think there's an undeniable like fact of just, I don't know, being in the clubs and being around other comics just doing it. I don't know. It's just different. And yeah, you can't skip that part. Yeah, you do have like I do think about some of my like best relationships in comedy and they're the ones that are helpful and mentors and all that. But mm -hmm. then you do have your like day ones that you just yeah. met at an open mic and you yeah. had no idea at that time that you were building like a friendship that yeah. would mean so much. And it's someone that you can just bitch about things <laughs> <laughs> at, the right, at the exact right level. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I think coming into it now, it's it's cool. I mean, I was in New York and um like people recognized me and they were super super welcoming to me um like joe over at the stand yeah uh, was, i had a pretty funny exchange with him uh francis ellis like invited me mm -hmm. out and i popped out just planning to watch him but i was late but um 
uh, I guess that's relevant to the story because I feel bad because he was the one to be like, yo, come see me. <laughs> yeah. And I just showed up late. <laughs> but I got there and Joe was, he goes, oh, man, I, I've been seeing your clips. And I said, oh, dope. He's like, you want to get up? And I was like, oh, yeah, like now? And he goes, no, bro, in two weeks. And I, <laughs> like, it took yeah. me a second to get this. For a second, you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if I'll be around. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. just my fucking ass yeah. burgers. I'm like, yeah, sure, whenever. That's what I love about New York. Because mm-hmm. I was here for a little bit. I'm out in New York now. And there's a lot of, I've had multiple shows where I just go to hang. And then yeah. they're like, oh, shit, yeah, I know you want to go on. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah, I do. All right. You yeah. Know, like, I'm not checking my notes. I'm good to go. <laughs> Dude. I I think New York is awesome in that way, and I probably romanticize it because I'm not there all the time. Uh-huh. But yeah, just for the pocket of time I was there, um, people were super welcoming. But I do feel this weird like um, thing where I don't know. I don't want to like skip any lines per se. Right. You know, I, I feel weird about that. Well, it's. I mean. But it's New York, New York doesn't let you do that, which is cool. Well, yeah, everyone kind of feels like they're more on the same. It, it, it doesn't f- I, obviously people are at very different levels out there yeah, like yeah. if you go to the cellar there's yeah. a table that you yeah. know you can't sit. but like i have just felt like people feel more on the same level out there and people yeah. are more just like down to like get to know you and like oh yeah. i don't know i'll look up your stuff and then yeah if you're funny you're funny and it's cool and no one's gonna be like the only reason he's there is because x y or z yeah and at yeah. the end of the day you have been doing it for a long time even if you yeah. sit down You've been touring a lot, so yeah. you've been putting in the hours. You Def. put out a special, Def. you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And it does help to like have a fan base. You yeah, know? yeah. No, I think uh, I don't know. I'm, I I think I care about this stuff because I've always cared about stand up. So yeah, I think some of these things. I, I know people have mixed emotions about them. Some people say this shit doesn't matter, and other people say you know, oh, it's really important that you're like connected with the people, but. Um, I guess I I care. I don't know why. Like, yeah, no. I mean, I think caring about what you care about is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it matters. Yeah. And I think, I uh, yeah, I I think you're doing it the right way. And Thanks, I think man. anyone saying like, yo, you don't need to worry about that is probably saying that because you are thinking about like Maybe, thinking yeah. about it appropriately is a good thing. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say like, dude, you're fine. Yeah. But if you were just like, you fucking losers, <laughs> yeah. I could sell this club out yesterday. Yeah, nah, like, I, I think no, no. There's, it, it is interesting. I think there are a lot of new people coming into stand up comedy are. who are learning about it right now. Like, definitely are. in your special, you're really like, how many people is this their first stand up show? Yeah. And it got a pop. Yeah. And I was like, that is fascinating. It really is crazy. It's a, it's an odd amount of responsibility. It's a, it's a fun way to walk people, too. Do people get pissed at you? Not pissed, but there are definitely people that have come to shows, and I can tell they're like... They want a video, they want a reaction, or... No, like, I don't think they knew what to expect, but I think they found out with me, they're like, I don't think I like stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> Is, do you think it's because your jokes cross a line topically, or they just didn't want to watch a guy talk at them for an I hour? I think so. Like, I think the format, maybe, they're like, oh, I thought there's going to be more, but he's just up there. It's just a yap sesh for an hour, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's tough to say. Because you put, like, you, you your joke, your stand-up is, it has, has edge to it, but so does your stuff online. It's not yeah. like you were, like, hiding the ball on that. No, no. And I honestly think, I always think I'm really, like, I'm not edgy at all. Like, right. On the spectrum, I feel. I don't think it's edgy in a the sense of, like, like, actually being an edgelord but mm-hmm. like you know you make jokes that like in the context of a stand-up club are like you know normal but if you like made a joke <laughs> yeah, about socially, like jesus like... being an abortion at dinner <laughs> dude like I would, there's some edge on that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah dude it's really funny what well, i think that's an adjustment too is like going to clubs and then realizing like how much edgier people can get oh yeah yeah and you go oh all right it can get crazy. It's kind of nice. Like, it's a bit reassuring sometimes. Like, oh, I don't have to worry. But yeah. Then- <laughs> yeah, it is nice. And then, But then there's also, there's the level of, like, some... The difference between being good at it and bad at it with edgy is so massive. Oh, yeah, it's very clear. I remember going to open mics and seeing someone and being like, okay, his favorite comic definitely is Jezelnik. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't know how to do it, <laughs> and that's going to be a tough fucking crash yeah, after man. that. Yeah, I've seen... I had the privilege of, privilege of seeing like a lot of people, because um, a lot of the comedy store people would warm up at the mic I used to go to. Uh-huh. So 
I see. A, I saw a wide range of people. Yeah. Like, in the beginnings of like where they were. Yeah. Um, what was the mic? Uh, it was at the Amsterdam Cafe. Okay. It was ran by a dude named Jackson McQueen. Okay. And um, I see all kinds of people there. Quinta Brunson would be there. Yeah. Rel Battle would be there. Um, David Lucas. Yeah. So it was like a broad spectrum of performers that, you know, are like very recognizable now. Um, and yeah, I think. So I think a lot of the time I was shitting bricks at that mic. What's scary when you're <laughs> in the, when you're at the open mic phase and then you yeah. see someone and they're going to be up at the store later yeah. and you've seen them and they've been on TV. You're just like, yeah. I was already nervous. Yeah, I'd be nervous to perform for zero people. I'll still get nervous at a shitty show. Yeah, just because it's like you want it. Like you're only there because you want it to go well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, yeah, that probably never goes away. No, I don't think so. I don't think it should. I thought it's varying levels of it, obviously. And yeah. It's nice to be like, oh, fuck it, I'll just screw around and have, like, a chill set or whatever. But, mm -hmm. like, still, whenever your name gets called, you're like, oh, all yeah, right, let's yeah, get it. Yeah. Do What's the most nervous you've ever been? Boy. Um, and and is it stand-up or have you or has there been something else, maybe shooting with somebody or doing something out of your comfort zone? I think, I don't know, I have, um, I have, like, a weird ability to block it out in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always like the night before. It's exactly that. Yeah. It's the day of the night before. Whenever you're doing it, you're like, oh, this is actually uh -huh. kind of fun. But it's the it's the thinking about it for so much yeah. time in advance that's excruciating. I would say like top three most nervous. Um, last year when I was about to start my tour, um, that was like uh, a theater run solo. I... Like the, it sold very well in advance, and I was like really stoked about that. But then it like set in <laughs> yeah. what I had signed up for, yeah. and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like I'm just gonna stand there for an hour in front of like massive rooms, and there's who no who know who you are yeah. and have expectations. Yeah. So I think that um, had me shitting bricks the night before, and then most recently, like the first episode back of Hot Laps, um, the dude Danny is just like. Um, a lot of people like him in Formula One. Ricardo. Yeah. Yeah. So I was really, you know, and and the conversations leading up, like, it was very clear what was and wasn't cool, like, as far as, like, Red Bull and his management. So I felt like so they a had lot of red So tape. many things that you had to stay away from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're driving a car. Well, bro. A cart. <laughs> and it was, like, the first time. I haven't really talked about this, but it was, like, the... We ha we had like one test day and then we made a bunch of like changes to it because it's basically a race car now and yeah. we didn't have like a proper test day with it and we were kind of under the impression that we were gonna have Danny on the track and it was just gonna be us but we get there there's already a crowd <laughs> uh, so it's and now it's live yeah <laughs> and then uh, all up and down the track well it's on Broadway in Nashville and so. All the bars are open right at 9 a.m. <laughs> and there's people performing in those bars, all like up the whole yeah. thing. And then there were three sections where later in the day when he, because he was going to show off like uh, one of the previous Red Bull F1 cars, there were three areas for him to do donuts. And all of those areas were rigged up with PA systems. So they were blasting music. <laughs> and then when I started driving the thing, it was making him really uncomfortable. Oh my god! So, like, I'm kind of jumping so you around were here. Already nervous in the beginning, and then yeah, it was just 15 more things. Yeah, and it was just getting worse and worse and worse. Was there was there a part of you that was like, I don't know if we should even do this? I y yeah, like, there was a sinking. You want to get it done, but it's just the, the fight or flight is yeah, 100, 100, percent. But there was like a sinking feeling as yeah. we were rolling out the desk, and I was seeing all these people lined up on the sides, like this is going to go fucking horrible. And yeah. So it's funny. Cause in that episode, people were complaining that we weren't driving a lot, but it was like making him not want to talk. And then, which is so funny. Cause of all the guests, he's a legitimate formula one driver. And but, he was like, yeah, he's just too fast and sketchy. I think it's cause like, he doesn't know me. Right. You know what I mean? And like, how could he be comfortable with just a stranger driving right, like him he around? Know, yeah, he's like, okay, this YouTuber wants to drive me around. That's and what you're he's like, thinking for I'm sure. I'm actually, you're into like karting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I had that conversation with him at the end, 
uh, cause we, we talked about that. Then he really opened up. Yeah. And I think he appreciated, oh, okay. There's a I, reason. Yeah. This yeah. Is the like, show. I think it clicked with him. He's like, I see kind of like he what you thought going he was the reason he was in a shitty desk driving yeah, fast yeah, yeah, and you're like no i care about this it's a nice desk yeah, yeah, i'm into carding yeah. this is why we're here the, <laughs> the other part that wigged me out about that whole well so i should say it was crazy too because when i would try to like stop at certain other parts of the track not only was it loud but people would just swarm and they'd be like daddy daddy <laughs> and i could see his brain trying to you know, like the question, like the people, the, the fan, question. The yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there was like a lot of elements, but, um, uh, something else that weighed me out about that was when he sat in and we just drove off, I was laughing. This is a horrible thought, but I'm like, dude, so like I just, me and him. Yeah. Like, that's so much faith in yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. No one talked to me. No one wanted to get to know me. I was told everything I couldn't do, but no one was like, Hey, are like, you weird? Are you good to drive? Yeah. I thought you were going to say that there was a part of you that was like, it would be really funny if this is the crash he got injured I mean, bro, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that was like another thing where people were you like. I hate the pre-written headline of something horrible dude, going on with you. I, I made a joke about that. Like, that was one of my jokes I was going to say. And um, my wife and everyone like that was working on the project, because she, she was helping with the project a ton, too. She was like. I wouldn't like that's just a horrible way to start this series. Like, <laughs> don't joke about Dude, that being the first joke yeah. to him, and then you just peel yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you enjoy Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to, but then I started really freaking out internally. Like, dude, if I killed this guy, <laughs> dude, like, I mean, it's a legitimate yeah, concern. Yeah, what you're doing is not not dangerous. No, like, I know. You tested the thing, but it's not like yeah. So I think. It was really funny when people in the comments were saying, you got to drive faster. I'm like, dude, you would not, no idea. on your first what out, f- yeah. want to fucking just, you know, send Danny Rick, like, over the <laughs> barrier. sending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, and then I would say, like, another moment I think I was, like, super nervous. What? <laughs> Man, I just full the day I got married. <laughs> no, seriously, I I got married too. It's yeah. it's, it's nerve wracking. That was pretty nerve wracking. But uh, we partied the night before mine too. So I woke up like hungover. So I had the anxiety, <laughs> and then I had the anxiety. <laughs> and I was sitting there. We went to like get. We went to get lunch, and everyone's like ordering like you know like a quesadilla and a burger. Yeah. But I'm like you know I'm Maybe not wearing not. a dress, but I want to look good. So yeah. I ordered like. I ordered like poke, but we're in San Luis Obispo and this random place, and it tasted fishy. And I was like, I think this is bad. So uh, I was like, Do I have food poisoning? I, it, the whole thing was, I just kind of sat there and was just freaked out for like five hours. Yeah, and then, dude, partying the night before—that's bold. I just when all my people are together, we party. And you can't just, help it. Just kind of what? No, nah, no. <laughs> all of my friends are in one place. We're not gonna have several drinks. That's and fair. we had welcome drinks and the rehearsal and are all they, that. Are they like childhood friends or college? We had like two hundred people, so okay. we had. But yeah, child childhood friends, some college, yeah, some comedy, but a lot of like friends from my hometown are still. Where are you from again? Still really close. I'm from the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so like an hour south of San Francisco, San Jose area. Okay, that's where I came up, and then I came up to the Bay Area scene. Yeah, but uh, also getting married in slow must have been nice. It was, and at the time, my wife was still living in San Francisco when I was in L.A. We I remember this long distance. Yes, yes, I remember this. And uh, and yeah, so so we met in the middle. <laughs> we were standing there. <laughs> we're standing there, day of the wedding. Everyone's suited and booted, like ready to go. And I see this guy come like walking by out of breath, shaking his head. And he just goes, whew, glad that's not us. And I was like, what do you mean? And my friend's standing next to me and he looks over to the hill and then he looks back at me and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, nothing. He's like, how'd you get the DJ for this? (laughs) And I was kind of thinking, I was like, there's no way he cares about how I booked my wedding DJ. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, how did you, did you go through like a website or whatever? So I step out and I look and there is a, billowing fire <laughs> across the street at a different vineyard with fire trucks and like people running around Sick. and uh i was like is that a fire he's like yep yeah it damn. is damn but we got through it we were okay that's cool bro did you have any crazy wedding no nah, no nah. moments you were all good no nah. I, I was when did you get married two gosh everything's such a blur now yeah i think 2023 
Okay, yeah. No, 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 no. You're going to check your phone? Is that in your phone? Yeah, I have to, bro. I have to. Where did you do it? Um, We did it in Italy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, super, super lucky. Oh, that's incredible. Where in Italy? Tuscany. Okay. My friend just did one of those in uh, Greve, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, near there. Yeah. Yeah. So my my friend did one of those and we got to go out and that's a vibe. Do you know the venue that you did it at? Oh my god. Um I think like Villa de Orto or something. Mm. Oh, I was 22. Sorry. Yeah. 22. I think Villa de Orto or maybe that was just one of the pl- I don't know, but yeah. yeah. They have a lot of options out there. It's the, cool. The exchange rate and the crippled Italian economy. It's w- it, a lot of travel these days. It's the like, American once you way. Get there, yeah. You're cruising. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no it was uh it was amazing um i okay so back to so what was the other oh the that was the other most time i was you were gonna, nervous was, i was, was like wedding i was being meek um but yeah. yeah fuck it call that number three that's that's fair yeah yeah that's fair it's because it's, it, it, it's not like the professional stuff is obviously it's in front of people but the like the personal stuff where you're like i'm not trying to get a take i'm not trying to get anything i'm trying to execute on yeah a one one take yeah meaningful has to work moment yeah the secret of it is it's gonna be fine and everyone loves you and just wants to see it happen but when you if you weren't nervous it'd be a little concerning yeah i think yeah i was nervous but at the same time i was uh i don't know we kind of like were able to mellow out the vibe did you cry when she walked out i thought i was going to and i didn't i was choked up but i i didn't maybe because (laughs) <laughs> you didn't have any moisture left. Because <laughs> I was hung over. Yeah, when you were hung over. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing left to yeah, give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was kind of just like the whole thing was so... I think that I... Once you're up there, there is a tiny part of you that wants kinda, to do your material. Kind of, but you're no. I was kind of <laughs> up there, and I was like, "This is tight, dude. This is a great crowd. It's a great yeah. audience, and it's the way you feel more comfortable when you're on stage." Yeah. And, and some of that was kind of happening, and I was like, "I was feeling the the moments," but then I was like, "My vows are gonna slap." Dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, that maybe that's why you were locked in no, a little no, bit. No. Yeah, that makes me sound like a horrible person. I was just <laughs> taking it all in. <laughs> I would say I cried a lot um, after. Oh, okay. Like, uh, like the next day we were like leaving, and I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe it's over!" And I would like listen to like a song and remember a moment from mm. that song, and yeah. just, bro, bawling. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> just weeping. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about how cool that was and how that was everyone in one place. And it's crazy how it hits you. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's only two times everyone's gonna be in one place, and the other one you're in the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I uh, it's so yeah, it's so funny. I like our friends just got married and they had me do a, like a little speech during the welcome night. And I, I was trying to be meaningful, but I just made it sound so morbid. I was like, this may be the only time you're all together like this. So <laughs> enjoy it. And then I went, my bad. They're like, cheers? Yeah, yeah, (laughs) literally, literally. But I do think that that's that is the intersection, right? Yeah. It's like the morbid is what makes things meaningful. Definitely. Probably. And people don't like it when you're like, don't forget we're all going to fucking die. Yeah. But that's what adds gravity to every situation. I agree. And whenever I forget or get caught up in the bullshit of being pissed about this thing or this thing that I have to do, I'm like, you're still here. Yeah. And it's going pretty good and you need to like enjoy that yeah i remember back in like college i was i listened to this artist from detroit this is an underground artist but uh he had this song where the whole song was just about you are only gonna do certain things once and it's a very like literal song but he just starts listing out all the things you're only gonna do once anal yeah (laughs) whatever anal yeah marriage uh no, what like, were the what were yeah? I'm trying to recall like, um, I think part of the song is just emphasizing like you can only have in your life like one big dream, or like one wow. big focus, and that like fucked me up. I thought, oh yeah, you really, you really only can realistically aim for like one, like I don't know your life's work or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then he even said you're only gonna have like one death. And I thought that's like kind of interesting to ponder too. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, obviously, depending on if you're like a reincarnation guy, you'd be like, "What? Yeah, <laughs> this podcast sucks." Yeah. But. Or but if yeah. you're, uh, I don't know, a um, 
Narcan guy. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nine lives, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little heroin yeah. cat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ever do heroin? No, have you? No, I just th- yeah. <laughs> thought that would be. A crazy, I know people who have be a crazy pivot. Yeah, no, the only person I ever talked to about it was I was like, "That sounds insane." Uh, how was it? And she was like, "It was the best thing I've ever done." Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, and I was like, "That's a pretty all-encompassing review," and I'm gonna take that to heart. Yeah, yeah. Are you much of like a party drink go hard substance guy or no? I had to like. I think growing up, uh, I had some like I had some friends that got into it, and I saw them kind of go like mm-hmm. bad real quick, and so I was Where never. Did you grow up? Um, I never say. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because it's fun. Okay. Yeah. Keep yeah. No, I saw, <laughs> dude. I saw. I don't know if you've seen this, but there's an incredible. There's an incredible thing on on Google about you um, because I know you don't say your uh, race. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask you. (laughs) But if you ask Google, (laughs) what it says is the YouTube celebrity does not like talking about race because he feels some people are judgmental and hateful towards other races. Although he would rather not talk about race and ethnicity. Noel Miller's ethnicity is white. Yeah. Is what it says. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's crazy. No, I just I don't tell my race because I want to be racist. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> that's fucking genius. <laughs> I want to hate everybody, and that no is, one can tell me not to. I think that's quality. I think that's beautiful, and I think that's the most progressive thing I've heard all fucking year. Yeah, that, when we're all when everyone that looks like me takes over. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a majority of us, we're gonna hate everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you are. I mean, you do look like the like whenever they do like an AI amalgamation of like everybody put together at the end of it it's you yeah yeah more or less me yeah you you know <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah if you can hate everybody you can probably fuck everybody too yeah. i mean you're just you're quadruple threat i think mixed race uh people are likely the m- most racist ones mm, <laughs> why do you think that because think- they feel like they can no like me, I feel so disconnected from everything that I'm supposedly that I supposedly am. Right. That I don't like when people discuss certain topics, I have no feelings towards it. And so I think inherently we just have like fucked up thoughts because we don't belong to anything. Right. So you don't have as much of a gut reaction. No. You think do you think you have more of like a outside observer sort of yeah. look? Yeah. Which is perfect for comedy. Yeah. But like I pay attention to a wide variety of people with a similar mix to me or yeah. like uh or people that I would consider a similar mix to me and I feel they all they're all weird they're all really weird really? yeah <laughs> yeah I don't want to name names but when you look at that them, would that would expose you it would but like on paper when you look at how they are and you line us all up you're like oh you're all like fucking strange it's- now, now, not only are you not telling, now you're making it really interesting because now I think everyone wants to do research on like what's the weird. But now, if but you let Google, me let me say the this too. What's the weirdest mix of races? Let, you're going to be put on a fucking list. Let me say this too: they're not all racist, um, and because people are going to be like, "Oh, you're just projecting that onto other people." So let me be clear: I'm racist. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> And that's the clip. Yeah, Thank that's you guys. The clip. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, let me be very clear. I am racist. Just me. Um, you got to own that. I think yeah. that's great. And I want to be clear. I am not. All right. Yeah, I don't really yeah. have the complexion to yeah. go racist. Cause no, that's I'm not. This goes from Mohawk to mullet, and uh, I'm this not, eagle I, starts looking a little German. Yeah. I'm no. I'm. I'm not. I don't think I am. But I do think I read about people and types of people in a very like. Uh, like observer a disco- a disconnected, a disconnected like kind you are of way. analyzing it you're not emotionally connected yeah yeah, yeah. so i think i'm prone to which saying, is what people tend to accuse white people of is being like you're playing politics with other people's lives and having like mm-hmm. a intellectual like what if actually police brutality is x y or z thing yeah I don't, but now white people have really taken up a new very emotional mantle yeah. <laughs> under the uh, yeah. under the red hat yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Red hats get fired up yeah, pretty easily. They do. I think everyone gets fired up now really easily. I think so too. I I do think there's a percentage of it that 
gets a little blown out because we see so much of mm-hmm. it and because so much of it is online. It's very, very uncommon yeah. that I sit with a person and they have like a really crazy, um, odd let's ch- reaction let's to change something. that. Well, I think we could change that, dude, because the th- main thing is I don't bring up crazy shit, yeah. but I really should just like go to other parts of the country and be like, abortion, let's get it. Yeah. Let's fucking figure this out. They like it in Europe. They're all about it. Do they? Yeah. They like to the fuck. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, bro. I'm pro fucking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, Damn. I don't like. I. Y- what a platform. Yeah. I, I'm pro fucking. <laughs> I think that that's fair. And uh, as long as everyone agrees yeah. and is of the right uh, mindset, you know, <laughs> no condom if you're if you're in the market for that. Yeah. You yeah. agree. You yeah. know? <laughs> But I haven't been. Um, I've been out of the game for a long time, to yeah. be honest. I think you too. You've been like over a decade out mm-hmm. of the game. Yeah, yeah same, we're locked same. in. Yeah, same. So, but I still like, I still like having sex. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, a, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. So as a, I think I'm gonna be into that forever. I think. Yeah, as a, so as a married man, you've not died down at all. No, you're still on it. I need. I, I'm a simple man. I need to. I need to. I need to nut. You need to release. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't believe in semen retention. I think that's incorrect. <laughs> I yeah. haven't studied the science, but no, I think some of the most uh, virile and functional and quite honestly productive uh, Americans and people in general have been people who spray. Yeah. Um, Do you, um, people who spray. <laughs> <laughs> and that applies to OnlyFans creators as well. That's right, dude. That's right. What's up, ladies? Yeah. Tap in. <laughs> Just kidding. <I> can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tap in is a crazy thing to say to someone to say to someone who can squirt. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's like, that is how you get it. You got to tap yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was so dumb. I'm sorry. Um, what the hell is I gonna say? Uh, you fuck a lot. You like to fuck. You <laughs> yeah, think the mo- oh, you gonna have kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily soon. I think I'd like. Uh, couple more years i think i'll probably want to come back to california at some point like this is where my life is this is where i'd rather raise kids but like i want to enjoy new york i'd like stand up and my career to get to a place where it makes a little bit more fiscal sense to have kids <laughs> as well you don't want to be in boise idaho yeah. performing for a twelve hundred dollar guarantee and drink tickets when you have a fucking one-year-old but <laughs> we need to hurry up then <laughs> that's the grind yeah that that's is the, the grind. grind what about you um i think you, you, you want to have kids who hate <laughs> racist kids. Yeah, racist kids. <laughs> Dude, people are, might go crazy on that one. No, um, no, no. I'm no. kidding. Uh, <laughs> you, uh... Yeah, I want to raise super hateful kids. <laughs> 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 the American way. <laughs> um, nah, I mean, yeah, like, we're open to it. Yeah. Yeah, if it happens, cool. Oh, but you, you're not going to, like, try for it. Maybe at some point. Right. You know? I, How old are you? Do you say that? Yeah, I'm 16. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's fuck. <laughs> uh oh. Joey's LA excited. Is back. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood is back. Give me this kid. <laughs> Give me this kid. Uh, no, bro. I'm I'm 34. Okay, cool. We're we're, we're yeah. I'm 33. So okay. we're like we're like yeah, same age. Yeah. Is your wife similar in age to you? Yeah, we're the same age. Okay, and yeah. same same, and that's the thing. That is tough, is because it's their 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 clock's a little different. Mm-hmm. You can't just like wait for if, like if I think if it were up to us, uh, we'd have them at like fifty. Yeah, you know, and yeah. just like do this for a while longer, have them at fifty, hope the parents are alive at one hundred and twenty. Yeah, just, longer life would be great. It'd be awesome. Hot take. Yeah, but not too long. I don't believe. I don't think people should live forever. No, no, that's stupid. That's you need how to move things on. get stale. That would be crazy if, like, George Washington was still here, like, yeah. arguing with Trump. Running shit? He, he might be. Dude. Yeah. He might be. He's like, make the drinking fountains separate again. <laughs> George Washington. Yeah, George, yeah. George. George Washington was famous for the drinking fountain policy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if he's 120, you know, he must have lived through it. That is true. He <laughs> definitely would not have been on the right yeah. side of that. <laughs> <laughs> G-Dub, man. G Dub was a good dude, I think. How, but not now, not completely. I don't want to. I don't want to say completely. Yeah. You know, but he did some good things. How many people were in America when he was number one? How many people were in? A, I might have to look that one up. No, no, no. It's fine. Zach, can you look it up? Oh yeah, look that up. <laughs> that would be that would be great. <laughs> I'm not used to having a producer. Yeah, what a yeah. what a deal. Yeah. This is sweet. Just call it out. Studio. Yeah. 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 How many people were in America when G.W. 
George Washington. Yeah, George Wash. How many up on that? How many people was he ruling over? That's what I want to know. This becomes a history podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because you know we're in our thirties. We can. He be- honestly, him versus Biden versus Trump, they would all be looking similar at this point. How the fuck do they have the census from seventeen ninety? Three point nine million. America could sustain that many people. That's crazy. That is crazy. I guess yeah, like thirteen colonies. That would make sense. Yeah, I, I mean, I get. I I'm kind of pretending to agree with you. I don't really have like a thought on like <laughs> per person, like <laughs> colonial. Like, I my brain went like YouTube. I was like, that's crazy. That's not even like. <laughs> that's not even like a huge pod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, that's, that's not, not even, even the amount of listens to sustain. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's not a e- Bobby Althoff clip. <laughs> <laughs> that's bar- Bobby Althoff and George Washington would be unbelievable as a married couple. Like, no, it just has an interview. Oh, interview. If he's still alive, she's yeah. like, so those are your real teeth? Yeah. And he's like, fuck you, you whore. Back to the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, why do you have a job? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um. Okay, I know I know. Uh, we don't have much more time here. Cause you do we not? Pro- well, I mean. What time is it? I think it's 8.50. Oh. So, yeah, I mean. Okay. No, we go to the hour. Okay, yeah, no, I'm saying, yeah, we got like 10. I, like 10 more minutes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do want to be respectful of your time no, bro, you're, you've been, dude, you're, you've been you're totally fine no yeah. it's totally fine <laughs> um i had a question because i know you're on the <laughs> <laughs> no, just doing the trank <laughs> <It's like laughs> have you dude. seen that trend on tiktok what where it's it's so fucked it's like skateboarders and stuff mimic like people who are like tranked or like fent like fented out <laughs> oh, no. they'll like go down the mountain and they're like <laughs> that's, it's unfortunately, so that's really good. Yeah, it's it's fucked because it it is funny. Do you feel like you are deeply on top of like trends and stuff that's going on online? No, because I, I would don't. say you for a thirty four year old, you're probably in the top like point zero zero one percent. Maybe I think so. I I mean people. I'm, I'm yeah. I don't know. I hear just because it's part of that. your job. I hear people tell me that, but I don't. I don't feel that way. You don't feel that way because no. I was gonna ask, what would your advice be for like a super unplugged? millennial who wants to like know what's going on i i'm not like up on it but i know people in my life that like think the fact that i use tiktok is like gen z swag and i think these people need like a guidebook yeah no i think that's um i think that's incorrect i think there's a lot of different people that use tiktok undeniably i don't think you can say that it's just for kids now i agree yeah i think i mean uh a lot of people uh, make this claim, but people argue that TikTok is a better search engine than Google because you mm. can get like very immediate, real. Right, and you don't really have to input anything. Like it's just giving you yeah. kind of what you want. Yeah, like I don't know if you're like travel to blank. There's yeah. guaranteed like six people who are like da 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 with me as I go to right. this place. This place I didn't like, and da da da. You can. There are interesting pockets of it. Like, yeah. I, like there's like I saw this like old man like talking about golf. Yeah. And, and that's not what people people are like TikTok, but it's like this dude was like, did you know that sheep's were actually the first course designers? Yeah. yeah. Which I didn't think it's because they eat the, through the grass. It formed the first bunkers. What? So like he was saying, and I don't know if this is true, but I saw it on TikTok, so I think it is, <laughs> that like the first courses were in Scotland, and so it was like a bunch of grass, and the sheep would eat, they would graze in a line, which is the first fairway. Yeah. But they would eat so much in certain pockets that they would eat through the grass, and it would make some like dirt. And those oh. were kind of the first bunkers, and that's how it came together. That's interesting. And if that's incorrect, I don't really care. I'm just going to keep it. Because like, he was like an old Scottish man drinking scotch. So I was like, it. he knows. Yeah. That's my yeah. that's my historian right there. Yeah. I think that's another thing. You can uh, you can learn a lot of useless shit, and you yeah. can just blame another person. That's like, true. Oh, I don't know. So I don't I'm sorry. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that's that. Just what you say some said. really fucked up <laughs> shit. I don't, I, don't know TikTok. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> Dude, I think, you know what's so awkward to me about TikTok is when you start describing something that you think you have only seen. Yeah. And then your friends are like, yeah. And, th- and then you're like, you want to tell Do you it. like it or do you feel weird about it? No, I just, I feel stupid for bringing it up. And I was yeah. like, nobody's original. We're all looking at the same things. <laughs> Yeah. Forget what I said. You do feel like it's like your own little special world yeah. where you know it, but then you're like, oh, this technically has been seen by 38 million people. Yeah. yeah. So your friends aren't on? They're they're out? 
No, I, like, I, a, a decent amount of them are, but like, I think, like, is there anywhere that you, do you ever make a conscious effort to try and stay on top of things, or do you think it just happens by uh, nature of you being online and like paying attention to content? I think I do make an effort to just look for weird shit. Yeah. I try. So how do you, how do you do that? Like, how do you source content and stuff like that? I think you just, if you're on TikTok, if you just swipe long enough, <laughs> eventually, yeah, you, you do see some weird shit. Yeah, and I think the way to do it is if you see someone or a like a character of a person. Like I just came across a guy the other day who dyed his hair in two colors, like the Joker, and he like did a comb over down the middle, and then he, um, with face paint, put Sudoku on his face, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like talking about how his his. Uh, <laughs> His his son's grandmother, that's how he kept referring to her, uh, is a bitch and a liar. And he was like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just going in. So, you know, definitely like and download yeah. that type of video. Yeah, and you're then, going, I'm going to need this. Yeah. Yeah. And then grow, go browse his profile. But then, like, if you maybe look at people who, like, he follows or – people that so you're see, just a king of the rabbit hole i think yeah you just gotta like poke like you yeah. just gotta go deeper it is unbelievable when you see something you go and it's a page that has like 20 followers yeah. but like 100 videos yeah. and you're watching them and you're like i don't know this isn't the same uh feeling that you get when you watch like cinema but you are having some form of artistic experience and some window <laughs> into human nature yeah yeah that is authentic it's a crazy like bit of voyeurism yes just, like, it is it, but yeah instead of like instead of like seeing a beautiful portrayal of the human condition it's more like standing outside of someone's window jerking yeah, off being yeah. like that's crazy it really is dude. it really is <laughs> it's not good dude i feel one of the first um like well-known sort of like people with a condition on tiktok was this guy and i think Oh, he would use some construction material. It was like, I don't know what it was for, but he would like cake it on the inside of his van. And he had the whole thing looking like a cave. And all the comments were, bro, you can't do this shit. You're going to get sick being around that all the time. But he would just post videos talking really regular in this van that looked like, you know, just like full of stalactites and shit. Oh my God. Of like construction equipment. And then he would just like step out of his van like from darkness into light, and he's like, "See, the car's fine. I'm fine." And and you're but, like, but what's yeah, happening? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, "Am I contributing to this? Yeah. Is that good?" Yeah. But then it's like, I can't imagine. I don't know if that person would be doing that, but I don't think that the fact that I'm watching this on TikTok prevented this guy from being like the CEO of yeah. <laughs> Chase Bank. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I love to I love to contemplate my participation in things while, you know. Just, just wearing like child labor clothing and yeah, you know. that's, that's a fun <laughs> yeah. thing to do, huh? <laughs> and l like slave wage labor developers who made the app I like to use. And You're never supposed to think about the reality of things. No, nah, if you do, I think like that's a horrible mistake. <laughs> that that would happen every like th three months in school. They would teach us some real shit, like. You know, growing up in California, they'd be like, you know, we're due for like an earthquake that's going to flatten your family's yeah. house. I was like, I don't want to think about that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's, they said it's, it's coming. They say Still. that. But it's like, what am I going to do about it? Worry about it? Bro, the funniest shit was during. I'm going to solve s slave labor by, va by wearing a pair of pants that don't fit quite right. Yeah. I'm not sure. I just think, I think all those guys that try to sell you, um, you know. I think half of them, some of them are good people. I think the others that are like, this is a, you know, whatever the fuck, safely made or made, consciously made. I think all those dudes are just trying to get enough customer base so then they can go back to the child labor. <laughs> that's the that's the problem is every time we do one of these things, like an expose comes out and it's like, that's not exactly what it was. <laughs> like, you know, like. I don't know what happened with Tom's. Is it yeah. fine? Or yeah. are they like, they're like, actually, the shoes go to the warlords who are kicking the children <laughs> with them. And you're like, okay, fine. Fuck it. I'm going to Ross, yeah. dude. Yeah. And then there's also the like, if I'm paying a bunch of money for a fancy brand, am I being like bougie and yeah. I should just be like a normal American and go get like a Wuhan made shirt from yeah. Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Like be down to earth <laughs> and just <laughs> wear something that was mad. I don't know. Uh, 
It's good to contemplate these things. It's good. It's As you good look to at schizophrenic people on TikTok, you're like, damn. What is society? Schizophrenic people have bars, dude. They do. Because they'll start saying stuff like, I was just walking to the comedy store yesterday, and this dude was like, I'm Lucifer. I was born. And he went on this whole, like, tale. And I was like, I didn't even read that part of the book. Like, this guy's more well-read than me. Yeah, he is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, bro. I think, man, it's, it's crazy when homeless people know more about the Bible than, like, regular going Christians. That's yeah. kind of a crazy comparison, right? It is. I think the, the <laughs> mentally ill are on top of that book. <laughs> yeah, they it. know everything. Well, because it's about them. Well, that's because they are Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a hundred percent. That's that's their words, not mine. <laughs> I feel bad shitting on those people. I'm, I'm I do a, too. Yeah. I'm kind of not. I mean, I think what we're saying is like they are intelligent and they're tapped into something, and yeah. that powerful story is resonating with them. Yeah, they're I don't tapped fully into something. Agree with their conclusions. <laughs> hey, tap in, real quick. <laughs> tap in with Jesus, real quick. Talk about squirting some. Uh. Tap in with Jesus. No, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, whoever, like the people that listen to your show are gonna go like, "Who is this guy?" Well, he just gets in here and he goes, "I'm racist." No, then, they're gonna love you, <laughs> and uh, there aren't that many of them, so you are good to go. <laughs> Let me be clear: I am very racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just dribbling yeah. down on it. Let me be extra, extra clear: for if my PR is watching this, I am extremely racist. <laughs> Jk, Jk, yeah. Jk. Six times, make sure we got a clean yeah. clip delivered yeah. it right to it, to each camera. Yeah. You're, it's a dude, a talk show, a guy called racist and a guy called (laughs) sexist would be fantastic. (laughs) Now that's a talk show. (laughs) The racist and sexist hour. (laughs) Joey and Noel. With race and sex. That's pretty good. And now we're we're on set. Look at that. (laughs) Who's the racist one? It's got to be you. You. No, it's got to be you. No, it's you. With your haircut, it's more inflammatory. I mean, it would be powerful. Yeah. It would be powerful. It would be white powerful. Yeah, yeah. But I. No, until you turn around. Then it's like, oh well, <laughs> bro. What is this? I don't, I don't know. I just this is fire. I just was. It's a nice thing to. Have. I was like, yeah, for I you. Like it. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, okay, <laughs> well, this was great. I I don't want. Sorry, to did I answer your question? I what fucking, was the question? Oh, do I it stay was, on top of? Yes, it was. Um, it was if you were going to give advice to someone who feels like they're out of the loop on things. Oh, that right, are going right, on, right. What would it be? And I think your advice was just. Just the, dig. The opposite uh, advice of like any mental health expert in the United States yeah. would just spend more time on social just, media. Just dig. But dig. No, I think spend less time, but make a concerted effort to dig. That's probably a good idea. Like set a timer. Like I'm going to go on TikTok for 25 minutes only, but yeah. let's get loose. Let's like, find the weirdest shit that I can. And if you read comments on stuff, there's always like people comment, I don't know shit and you're like what do you mean by this and yeah if you answer what that means you go oh damn i'm fascinated by comments yeah they're it's good it's become a huge they are people are very very funny yeah um but it is horrifying sometimes the things that, that they say yeah definitely um do you when you're watching stuff on the internet do you feel like you're enjoying it or do you think you're analyzing things i try to enjoy it but yeah unfortunately i think i'm kind of like poisoned in that way i do yeah. analyze stuff yeah. i don't want to be that way though i'm trying to be less like that yeah yeah which is good okay so final two questions uh we'll do we'll do advice here because as we've discussed you're on you're you're at the you're on the precipice of a lot of different things what advice would you give to stand-up comedians who are trying to uh do better on youtube oh man <sighs> This one, this one's a tough one for me because I don't know. Sometimes I think less is more. I think in the early, the early formula, I would say for people who really kind of blew up on YouTube, in my opinion, is similar to people who blow up on TikTok. And I think it's people who record themselves, but they're somehow able to just act like they're not being recorded, or it's very like one to one. I think. What I notice about stand-ups is there is a tendency to want to bring what they can do on stage to video. And I actually think sometimes that just with the way internet is now, actually people watch video to like get to know you. Mm -hmm. So it's almost better to have no production value and you can just kind of like 
I would say if you're a comic, you could just do a weekly something where you're like, I'm doing this today. And try not to draw what you do on stage into the videos. Like, try to give it, like, oh, oh, and this is the other thing I say, sorry, is, like, I think don't do it to just do it. I think I think try to find some purpose to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that answers it. It's kind yeah, of so, yeah, to expand on it. So you would say, like, less of, are you saying less, like, stand-up specific clips or more like if you are going to do stuff that isn't that, like, don't try and do this really ornate, like, f- fully thought out, fully written out thing and yeah. just kind of be yourself yeah. and, and let yeah. people find you in a low production value way. I think that, yeah, and, and I don't know, I would also say, yeah, you can post clips or whatever, like do that. But I do think posting other stuff that isn't you on stage is good because yeah. I think sometimes, like, you know how clips are. If if people watch clips and they just make up all kinds of aspects to that context of like, oh, this person was a was a plant, or wow, right. I can't believe you really. <laughs> it's amazing how many people think they're plants, and it's like. You think I'm writing, casting, and yeah. paying people to be there? No, Dude. I just put a camera there, and if it's good, I show it to you. If yeah. it's not, I don't. Casting a plan. I mean, that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to actually plans? do it. Yeah. yeah, That's actually a fun We're idea. We're going to do really elaborate shit. A full shit. special that's yeah. like a three-act structure and has yeah. all these different characters. And- I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, no, I'm going to do plants in comedy clubs, unbeknownst to everyone else. I'm going to put like SFX, like squibs in them, so I can pull out a gun and just shoot them in the middle of the show. You are going to do this, aren't <laughs> you? I could see you actually doing this. <laughs> Just Barry style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the election's coming up. Oh yeah. my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, what do you do for yeah. work? Yeah, yeah. what do you just yeah. assassinate yeah. someone? Bah, bah. What? How People long you guys been be together? Shitting their. Pa- You're still holding the gun. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. How long? How'd you guys meet? Yeah. <laughs> You're just waving it at them. <laughs> but yeah, I would say I don't know. My advice would be. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know, try to, like, let people get to know you outside of what you do on stage. Or it could be, like, an extension of that where you're kind of giving them a window into why you write the way you write. Something like that. But I think yeah. whatever feels natural. Yeah, so you think that kind of the current age of the Internet is is tr- just trying to be authentic and just giving people a window in. And I, th- I think that, that that's what people want. I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about is, like, you're going on a scroll, you're seeing some crazy guy, and you're like, I want to see you yeah. and your friends yeah. in the rawest form. I mean, that formula was tried and true for a lot of people on YouTube, and it's tried and true for a lot of people on TikTok. Um, so, yeah, I, I think like that. Yeah, authenticity. I do think that's why, like, I, I think, you know, and I'm not, like, being, like, shitty. I know we've made a lot of jokes, but, like, I think, like, people with down syndrome are having a nice moment on tiktok because it's genuinely authentic yeah content at least in my algorithm i like see it pop up and i'm like what are you doing oh, awesome love e- you everyone likes to pretend that they don't have people with down syndrome in yeah for but you it's, page, they but do they do and we all read the comments and those are funny I l- they are rude i love the i love the guy uh, i forget his account but he always stitches people that play like the little in-app games uh-huh and he stitches them being like, oh, my God, this is so difficult. And he parodies that he has Down syndrome. <laughs> he parodies it? But he'll, like, he'll beat the game in one try. He'll be like, <laughs> oh my and, and dude, dude, it's crazy. He, like, makes a noise, like, as if to, he'll go, like, uh, easy. Yeah. Like, you know, he he tries to, like, highlight the fact of his condition Yeah. by, like, making, like, a noise. But then it's always hilarious because he does beat the game like immediately. That and, is incredible. Yeah, so it's awesome. Um, okay, final question: uh, Is there anything that you could do that would make you feel like you made it? Oh, bro. Uh, I don't know. Probably like. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never really thought about this. I just kind of live one day at a time, man. I think that's a perfectly acceptable <laughs> answer. I mean, no, it is. Like, I'm being a, I'm being a dick. Um, <laughs> to make me feel like I've made it, I don't know. I think as much as people want to pretend that they don't care about um, like cosigns and reassurance from people who have done it, I think if like some prominent names in comedy were like, oh yeah, this kid's solid, I think that would give me a. I wouldn't say like I made it. But I would rephrase it as like I think in entertainment you want that feeling of security. And I think the people who are kind of 
that sell whatever it is, films, music, they're all kind of part of this category of people where they're doing well. And I think they have a degree of security in entertainment, which is hard to achieve. So I think when people like that kind of like, you know, point down at the peasants and they're like, he's He's the chosen one. Yeah. Yeah. He's with us. Like, yeah, I think that's basically what I'm getting at is I want, I also want fiscal security. Well, by way, I hear you. And and that is what you're saying. (laughs) But based on what you said earlier in the interview, I think there's a, a, huge level of like personal satisfaction that you would get from like that's the one thing i started as that's what i want to be known as and being somewhat anointed by the people that are doing it might get rid of some of the insecurities that you've had definitely yeah yeah so i think yeah i guess like uh, just a simple answer fiscal and emotional security all at once would be a nice thing to get that's all i'm looking for bro yeah yeah i just i want both and it'd be nice if it came by way of you know the gods that be yeah Uh, because the people choose you can't You can't force fame. The people choose it. Correct. You know, so if the people chose me and they elevated me up and then the people up there were like, he's good. That would make me feel like I made it, which is such a very specific thing. It makes sense, though. (laughs) It makes perfect sense (laughs) to me. Yeah. Uh, Well, thank you so much for doing this. Bro, anytime. uh, Is there anything you you want to plug on this much smaller show? (laughs) Um, Go watch Joey on tour. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) He's on the the road. Thanks for the plug, Noel. That's right. Please come see me on tour. If you're watching this the day it came out, I am in Miami. Uh, April 4th, Miami. April 5th, Delray Beach, Florida. April 7th, I'm in Tampa, April 11th to the 13th. I'll be in D.C. April 27th to 28th. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, May 2nd and 3rd, Norfolk, Nebraska. And then uh, May 17th and 18th, Fargo, North Dakota. So May. May is a, that's a five-star month right there. That one's for the aristocrats only. The Nebraska, North Dakota swing. Nothing bricks me up like that. Then to Dallas. June 14th and 15th. We got Vegas coming down the pipe. We got a lot coming down the pipe. JoeyAvery.com slash live for tickets. Also my website if you want to uh, if you want to request a city, if you want to just join the mailing list so I can tell you when I'm coming through, uh, that's also my website on the Tell Me Where to Perform tab. Thanks for the plug. Here's the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check him out. Sweet, man. Thank yeah, you. dude. Of course, dude. Anytime. This was super fun. Oh, I, I hope so. Okay, there it is. That's the interview. Thanks to Noel for taking the time and lending us uh, your studio there late night. Super fun chatting with him. Um, I, uh, yeah, for the monologue today, I kind of wanted to talk about stress. I feel like I've been kind of, I've been in that place for a while and, and, uh, and I started noticing it all around me. You know, maybe it was just because I was feeling stressed myself, so I started asking people about it. I mean, I'm always curious in what people want. Even when people have things, you, you you always assume other people are less stressed than you, right? Like even in this interview, I'm talking to Noel. I'm like, oh my God, man, you're doing all these numbers. You have all this content that's popping on YouTube. What do you even want? And he's like working on his own thing. And he has things that he wants to kind of dial in in the stand-up space. You know, same way that like, you know, I'm looking at all the stuff he has like, oh my God, you must be killing it. And there are other people who ask me, friends of mine who are earlier on in their, in their comedy journeys who haven't started headlining yet. And they're like, oh my God, you did it. This was the dream forever. You finally made it. Like, how does it feel? And it's like, doesn't feel like I made it at all. feels like I made it to a new level. And now I'm like, how the fuck do I get there? And i have been in my head about it because I was like, oh, man, I have all this stuff going for me. But, I mean, I just – I feel so stressed. And I've just been in a bad place recently. And then I finally realized that I was being a bitch. Like, that was kind of it. You know, and I'm not saying – this isn't about – I know this show ends up being a lot about comedy because that's who I've had on. But the reason I bring this up is I think – I think it's an interesting note for everybody. Because I've been talking to a lot of people, and I, I feel stress in the air. I can feel it out there, okay? When I, I can feel it. It's, it's around me. Okay, I've been talking to people. Like, a friend of mine has, has done all the things I haven't yet, right? Like, he's, he's made tons of money. He's been successful in business. He's got the house. He's got the, he has the kid. He's got the family. I'm like, oh, my God, you must feel like you made it. And he's like, this is the most stressed I've ever been. 
And he's like, you, man, you, you, you don't have a day job anymore. You're finally free to do stand up all day and you get to travel and you get to see all these places and you must feel like you made it. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel, feel more stressed than I've ever been. And I think it's normal. It's natural. You get to a new level. You feel it. OK, you're also it's maybe because I'm early 30s. I think 30s is an age where stress starts to hit because you go from being when you're 20s, you're just this hot little ball of potential. You're just like, I'm just going to fucking, I'm just going to, it's going to happen. I'm going to have a private jet. And then you hit your 30s and you're like, it's hard for this generation to own property, you know? And so it starts changing. And you hit this when you're in your 30s. You hit this, I feel like, yeah, I've noticed you get into this resource acquisition phase where you're like, I'm going to need that, okay? And then even when you start getting stuff, you're like, I'm going to need more of that, okay? You buy a house in a nicer neighborhood, hey, baby, we made it. Two weeks later, you're like, that fucking family next to us, wife's going, I like that fence. That's a wrought iron fence. I'd love to have a fence like that for this house. And you're like, God damn, bro. We gotta, we, we need to acquire more. We have 20 grand right there for that fence. I don't know fence prices. I live in New York, but I think that's about right. And so it becomes this what's next, what's next, what's next. And all within the realm and the time frame of thinking, this is who I am. This is who I'm becoming. This is what's happening. It can be stressful, but at the same time, what I had to realize for myself was I started being a bitch about it and bitch, it's not a gendered thing. You know what I'm fucking saying? All right. It was just one of those things where I just caught myself because I noticed it and I identified it. I started thinking about it all the time. And then I was just like, oh man, I'm stressed out. And then I started wearing it like a badge. You know, because then people will be like, man, stuff must be going well. I'm like, well, I don't know, bro. It's tough. It's tough out here. And it's like at some point you have to ask yourself and I would uh, I will challenge this to you right now at home. If you're if you're going through stress now, big qualifier here. There are real stresses and challenges in life that exist. That are not what I'm talking about. OK, I'm not asking. I'm not I'm not saying that if you're like grieving or going through some like serious you know, like war level shit that I'm like, stop being a push, dude, just rage. Like I'm not doing that. But I think there's a large amount of people that are stressed, but you're feeling a stress that in my opinion or in my, in my experience, when I was thinking about it with myself, it almost became self-indulgent and I was making it larger than it was. I started thinking about it, I was like, damn, I'm stressed. I got to figure out how to like unfuck myself and then I kind of just realized that I needed to stop only thinking about myself and my stuff all the time it does take a level of focus and perfectionism to get things right to be a successful person of course but if you become lost in that pursuit and start wearing it like a badge and start just carrying it with you all the time you're not going to be as effective as you were you got to let go you got to be able to go with the flow you got to be a normal person you got to be like water okay I think honestly, one helpful breakthrough for me was being back home in California. Okay, California can always get me right in the right time, in the right space. Um, driving through Santa Cruz on a sunny day, listening to reggae. I was like, dude, I'm Ivory. I am back. You don't know about me. I'm back, son. But it really was actually fun. I did a show in uh, Carmel, which is a great place to be if you are a multi-millionaire uh, older white person uh, or someone who's visiting for the day performing for those people and it's a beautiful place and I went for a run you run along the beach you can look at Pebble Beach the nicest most beautiful golf courses in the world cost several thousand dollars to play there you gotta stay at this nice hotel and you look out over the ocean and I was running by the ocean. I was like, I forgot about the ocean, the ocean. It gives you this feeling, the waves, the bigness, the infinity of all of it. It makes you feel small. It makes you realize that your problems and your, oh my God, how were the metrics on my last post or whatever my boss emailed or whatever. It's like, who cares? The ocean doesn't give a fuck. It's been here before you. It's going to be here after you. You start thinking about what goes into the ocean. It's all these, there's giant whales and, and, Things that I, I was, I'm, I'm not even thinking about that are bigger than me that are living and dying and eating each other and shit. And then it's just like, dude, who cares? Just live, just be a part of it. Just be present. Rah! And the great thing is the backdrop to all that, the thing that I was looking at is Pebble Beach, which is beautiful, which is something to behold, which is a place that I want to play. And the funniest thing about all of it is I realized, even knowing myself, 
when I get to play Pebble Beach, when I get to stand on top of that beautiful man-made pristine course looking out over the ocean that's so much bigger than all of us, I'm just going to be up there going, ah, fuck me. God damn it. Shit. Fuck me. I suck. God damn it. You hit it into the water at this course, you fucking idiot. And I'm not even the most angry golfer of all time, but that's what I'm going to do. And that's what the pros do. And that's what the people do. And it's so funny because you have this gorgeous course and this gorgeous space and it is dominated by people who are so stressed and mad about the little meaningless thing they're trying to accomplish, who are only able to stand on that course because of the money they've made working on this other thing that in the grand scheme of things is very meaningless, but they're really trying to accomplish because it is their life and it is their legacy, even though none of that really matters, but it does to them and their family and you're wound up and you're stressed and you're, mm, and it's happening right there in front of the one beautiful thing that doesn't give a fuck about it. And that's what you're paying to see. And you still can't connect with it. I found that to be a very helpful meta metaphor because that's everything that's happening all the time. Like I realize I don't, I don't look at space much when I do. It like takes me a while to like process. I'm like, Oh dude, I for especially living in a city dude, living in New York. I forgot the moon exists. I'm just completely up my own ass with, with, you know, whatever's going on out here. And I realize that what's going on in the world matters. And it's not like we can all just sit there and just fucking vibe out and look at the moon, but losing perspective on where you're at in the grand scheme of things, I do think causes this kind of self-centered and ultimately self-defeating vibe that I've been trying to get rid of. So I realized that that was the least funny portion uh, of a comedy show, but it's where I was at today. It's what I wanted to talk about, and I don't have a therapist, so I feel like this was good. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, for me, it's a helpful reminder, and it's, it's something that I've thought about and reminded myself of necessarily at least once every three months because I forget it. And I always will. And uh, the concept of being meaningless is interesting because to me it makes things a lot more meaningful. It takes the stresses of your small life and kind of chips away at them. And then it takes the fun little things and it makes it more meaningful. When you realize you're in this infinite universe and we're all going to die and whatever, it's like, oh my God, the fact that I love someone and get to kiss someone is amazing. The fact that I get to have some beers and scream at the fellas about nonsense for a night and do karaoke becomes so much more beautiful instead of like waking up the next morning like oh I'm hungover I didn't send my emails it's like dude who gives a fuck live laugh yeah I'm gonna say it love be a little bit less stressed enjoy yourselves enjoy the moment Enjoy your day. That is this week's episode of The Joey Show. Please come see me on tour. I'll actually be funny. We'll see you next week. Got a little something for you out there. Everybody who needs a little something. I got something for you. I started a podcast. Everybody knows you need a podcast. Every white boy needs a podcast. Every comedian needs Cause if I don't have a podcast How will people know what I think about shit Cause I think about shit Like all the time No seriously, I'm like always thinking about shit So now I have a podcast Come on It's different from the other podcast Cause it's mine Talk all the time. Plus, other podcasts are sluts and hoes. Come on. So, thank God I hear of a podcast. Every white boy needs a podcast. Every comedian needs a podcast. And now I hear of a podcast. Come on. Please subscribe to the podcast. Hit the smash it and the like it and the YouTube button for my podcast. I hope everyone listening makes love tonight. Do the 
us out of our pockets While you're getting up inside They're smashing the guts Not to be cruel 